Hey, this is Home Inspector Dan Pierce with the Aeropoint HOA. I'm on the board of directors. We had a meeting last night on Wednesday. You probably missed it because no postcards were sent out to anybody. So there was nobody at this meeting besides the board members. It's unfortunate. We'll try not to make that happen again or try to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Make sure everybody has a voice in the community and has a say in what's going on. But I wanted to make this video to kind of bring you guys up to date over what we talked about last night. So we talked about the landscaping. We talked about the tree trimming. We talked about the playground sets. I'm going to walk you through some of the stuff on site and show you what we talked about. But the biggest thing that we talked about was probably the tree trimming. So we had six companies come through and give us estimates for tree trimming. We have been having RH Dupper take care of the trimming, which we're not very satisfied with. You'll see why later. Um, I've been talking about lion's tailing for a while and how they're over pruning a lot of these trees out here just way too high and we need to get a professional arborist to come in and look at it. So out of the six companies, five of them provided us estimates between 17 and I think it was like $52,000 we got uh, from an estimate last year, but this year I think we're between 17 and 32 was, was the average. But there was only one or two companies that was down at 17 and that was the company that we've been using. So we've been using the cheapskates. We've been using the guys that are lowballing us and and rightfully so they do our grass too so they want to save some some money and just do you know one account do two different services and make some more money on it i don't blame them but they're not doing a good job they're not professional tree trimmers rh dupper came through here just the other day and plugged all of our grass that's why we have all these plugs all these little pieces of soil all over the place looks like little cat turds but that aerates the ground gets it ready for the summer season but they left some nice tracks in here so whenever they were working out here, doing that work, they just drove through here and left the tracks in the rock. Yeah, we're in need of weed control again. They drove right over this bush, right over the side of this bush. Now the bottom of this light pole here, this is Houston and Neely Park with the soccer field. So this is getting really rusted out, really corroded probably from sprinkler overspray so sprinklers aren't getting adjusted right and it's water is hitting this so this electrical outlet and all these metal connectors are really getting corroded and rusted out and this is our weeds coming back got a lot of grass that's been overseeded over the side here but tons of weeds coming up through here and that's one of our beautiful trees that they over pruned Look at that thing. This is kind of a good view of how these trees are being over pruned. This is just one of our parks here, but all these big trees, they should have foliage that comes down quite a bit farther to provide shade for the tree. But all of these have been severely pruned. And we're probably due for a coat of white paint on this soccer goal here. There's a few rusty spots. Just want to protect this metal from all the sprinkler overspray so it doesn't get any worse but there's some spots that are starting to rust out on it. And quite a few, bit more weeds. Got weeds all over the rocks here. So we're on Houston right now, and this is just to the north side of Houston. This is the sidewalk. There's Oak Tree Elementary, but these trees are even pruned way too tall. This mesquite back here is at least 30 feet off the ground before there are any branches on it. So once monsoon winds pick up, that thing's probably going to break. But you know, we put in $80,000 worth of new trees this year. And these are some of those new trees. Now the days that they were planting these, they went out and they staked them. And a representative from our HOA board walked around and placed them. And drew little circles where they were supposed to be. Now that night, there were three circles right back up in here where these trees should go. Now I understand maybe that was a small place to put those trees, but the next morning they were all planted in the bottom of our drainage ditch in a, in a straight row, which if anybody does landscaping, you don't plant three things in a straight row. It just looks terrible. So the company just took it upon themselves to move these trees away from the fence line, put them directly into our drainage canal which they shouldn't be. You know, when, when it floods, this is where the flood waters go. 
and you don't want these big trees to just be in the bottom of it, stopping the flow of water or building up any debris that might be flowing through here at the time. It was also brought up that we needed to replace these signs. These signs are looking pretty old. These are kind of the sticker version. You can see some of the sticker just peeling off on it. Um, we were gonna look into another version where it's actually like imprinted onto the metal. See what the cost difference is there, but we would like to replace these soon. And this is the soccer field court off Houston and Neely. We've got one, two, three, it looks like four signs that we need. At least four signs down there. Now this is on the south side, so we're gonna get a lot of sun. These signs don't look too bad. Definitely got some bird doo-doo on them, but the dog trash things are looking like they're in pretty good shape. We do have some random trash around here, but these signs, looks like we need four of them. And another dead bush up here. Not too far from where those trees are planted too. And yeah, we've got irrigation lines sticking out. You know, that, that line has been sticking out for months. Nobody's fixed it. Nobody's taking care of it. Got a lot of dead plant material around the base of this tree too. Probably where they were spraying earlier, but even though they were spraying, we've got tons of weeds popping up. Look at this. They were trying to spray these weeds in here and they sprayed half this bush with weed killer. And you can ask me what weed killer does to bushes, I can tell you this it kills it so they sprayed these weeds trying to kill them instead of just pulling them out and they killed the whole side of this bush more irrigation lines visible now these are trip hazards right next to a sidewalk now this is one of those bushes that always grows suckers we get a bunch of suckers growing up from the base of this tree and they stick out and hit people walking by this is the corner of Houston and Golden Key where we had an irrigation leak several months ago that caused a little bit of sidewalk damage there. Nothing too crazy, but why do these suckers grow so much? According to the tree doctors, Benjamin over there at Tree Doctors, it's because we're over pruning them. Because we're over trimming them, they need to grow more leaves so they can gather that sunlight, so they can provide shade for the trunk. So when we over prune them, we get excessive amounts of suckers growing on the bottom side of these bushes. And that helps protect the base from the excessive heat that we get in the summertime. So we keep trimming these things back so far, we're just gonna be killing all of our bushes and trees. See, here's an excessive amount of suckers growing off this tree. You can see all these branches that are growing way down low. It's just trying to provide shade for itself because we've pruned this thing so thin that it needs to grow this stuff. It's kind of a protective mechanism to protect it from the heat. And a lot of this is scarring from being too hot. More irrigation lines showing in here. This is the walkway going in between these houses up to the Neely Park. Now some of these trees might have to be pruned pretty high just because of how this how narrow this walkway is we don't want people to be hitting in the face with tree branches or anything but I mean there isn't a branch on this under 10 feet from the from the ground so as much as nobody wants to get hit in the face there's no reason to be pruning these things quite so high look at all the suckers trying to grow on these trees look at all that and all this some of the curbing here at Neely Park, or the edging, is getting kind of elevated. Sure don't want anybody to trip on that. That might need to be fixed a little bit, but again, we're looking at over pruning with all these trees. We need shade, and we don't get shade if we don't have foliage. So if you prune these things too thin, what are you gonna get? Nothing. You're gonna get a bunch of dead trees. We did talk about the playground equipment possibly updating it now this stuff is original to the HOA community you can see a lot of the rust is forming on the steps on the whole structure itself we've done some minor repairs to it to try and protect people so they don't get cut or injured around this but you can see it's falling apart protective plastic is coming off so it's exposing the rusted metal which is not good for kids to be playing around so Possibly we're going to be replacing two swing sets or two playground equipments. 
swing sets were possibly an option to put in this area. So maybe we do one playground, one set of swings. And we did bring up a uh, possibility of shade over the top of these play areas. Um, one of our board members said that it was good that we had shade over the top of the picnic tables, but we should have it over top of the playground equipment. I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like it would be a pretty big expense. And a lot of those days that it's going to be super hot out here, the kids aren't going to be want to, wanting to jump around on this anyway. And what happens on the cold days if we do have it shaded? Now that playground equipment isn't in the sun, it's warm in the sun, but it's cold under, under the shade. So I'm kind of on the fence about that. And they plugged this part too. They marked all the sprinkler systems with their pink paint so they didn't run over the top of them and damage those. And we continue our journey through Africa. This corner is looking pretty bare at the corner of Merrill and Benito. I think it's Benito. Yeah. I've had some bushes die here the last year or two. See, they pulled them out of here, pulled them out of there. We've got some irrigation lines still run here. Probably need to fill this corner in with something else. And we're over here by Merrill Street. Starting to look up at all the overpruned trees as well in this area. And over to the Merrill Park. That guy doesn't look too good. Doesn't look very healthy. Not compared to this guy or that guy next to it. That guy looks pretty dead. Tons of suckers growing up the tree. So this is all the mud that's left probably from people walking in the plugged grass. Once this gets wet, it just sticks to your shoes. But again, mesquite tree. It's got some shade. It's going to be a nice shade tree this summer, but it's just really, really pruned high. Got to bring that down a little bit. And that tree is no exception over there either. Look at that. There isn't a branch under 20 feet off the ground on that tree. I guarantee that top branch suffers some damage this year during monsoon season just with all the weight up there. You know, that thing's just going to be swaying in the wind. It's insane. But this is the other playground equipment that we're talking about replacing like I said it might be an option to do replace one of the playground equipment sets and do a swing set in the other area might not be a bad idea this isn't as damaged as the other playground set this doesn't have as much wear and tear obviously rusting at the supports below I thought we paid somebody recently to clean up this paint um, I guess not but the steps are a lot better over here. Honestly, this set doesn't look too bad. If we cleaned up the paint on the supports, tried to stop that rust the best we can from getting any worse, maybe have somebody come out and inspect it just for insurance or liability reasons. We do have a little bit of rust on the bottom side here. But it's way better than the other set. But if we could replace the other set, I think that would be great. But part of our problem is, too, is this is all water this dark sand area it's from where water was hitting so we've got sprinklers hitting the playground equipment it's going to deteriorate faster so if your landscapers or irrigation people aren't maintaining that sprinkler system it's going to come over here and we're going to get all this damage water and metal they don't mix they've been trimming our trees way too high like I made a video a few months ago about this being trimmed way too high. It exposes that trunk to excessive sun in the summertime. And then what it also does is puts all the weight up top. So when the wind starts pushing around come monsoon season, we're going to have a lot of broken branches. We're going to have a lot of messed up trees. And we already do in the community. We put in $80,000 worth of new trees this year. And I think we need to guarantee that the company that is servicing us or trimming our trees is doing a good job to promote the lifespan of these trees, to make them last and look as beautiful as they can. They're not just here to be here. They're supposed to look aesthetically pleasing. They're supposed to provide shade. They're a resource. They're not just for cosmetics. You know, this shouldn't be a liability. Trees shouldn't be a liability. They should be an asset. And we need to keep them as an asset and keep these things looking as good as they do, if not better. And because they keep overwatering this spot, we haven't had rain in weeks. 
we haven't had any sort of rain in weeks and they just came through and plugged this thing the other day look at all the tracks they left like they could have walked this and made sure it was dry before they drove through it and left all these ruts but they didn't they just drove through it rutted it up and then somebody complained and they had to come back out and patch up the marks and take care of it but why are we not fixing the overwatering problem where where are we getting all this excess moisture we need somebody to come out and look at the irrigation system and make sure that it's not just leaking water in this area because this area is always wet. Why is this area always wet? Now we did pull up the water fountains. They were all rusted out and corroded. There wasn't much life left in those. Let us know if you want them replaced or not. The board would like some feedback on that just so we know. It was the general consensus at the meeting last night that we would probably go with tree doctors, but because tree doctors didn't provide an estimate, they don't want any trimming done right now because the trees have suffered a lot and they want those limbs to grow back before they provide an estimate. And rightfully so, I think is the only honest company to provide information instead of an estimate. They don't just want our money, they want these trees to look good too. So that, that's reinsuring that we can work with a company that actually cares about the trees and not just about the dollar. But just so you know, our goal is to let these new trees grow up and the old trees, let them fill out this year, let them grow their limbs and their branches, let them fill in a little bit. And then maybe this fall we'll circle back with the tree trimming company and have them come out and provide an estimate and see where we're at. But we need to let these trees grow back a little bit. They're just too thin. They're not providing enough shade. And what would you do? I mean, if you were running a landscaping company and you were getting paid a bunch of money to cut grass and you had a couple people that could cut some trees, why wouldn't you offer to do it for a cheap reduced rate? Because you're on our site anyway. But now you've got the same people cutting the trees as blowing the leaves. You know, it's kind of a problem there because they're going to be cutting down too many leaves or too many branches because they don't want to blow so many leaves. You know, I've worked landscape, I know how the mind thinks. So right here behind our sign as well, we've got a dead bush, likely from not getting enough water. Plenty of irrigation lines that are exposed on here. Run across the top of the rocks. Now there's been a lot of graffiti on this this year. I've came down and painted it once. I think the community has hired somebody to come down and paint it once or twice more. Looks like somebody's sleeping here. That looks like a bed. Hello? Uh, what the hell is going on here? Okay. Wow, I wasn't expecting that at all. Anyway, we're doing what we can around the community to try and bring this place back to life a little bit. At least in my opinion, it's went downhill in the last few years with R.H. Dupper taking care of the property. I think if we get a new tree trimming company come in and actually take care of the trees that are here properly, professionally, things will start looking better. I also think we need to get estimates just on a new um, landscape company to take care of the grass. I don't think they did a terrible job with the irrigation, although I don't think they did an impressive job either, because there's a lot of irrigation lines around that are still feeding bushes that are dead. And when they redid a lot of the irrigation, a lot of those lines were pushed to no plants at all. So whatever plants didn't get the water, they're dead and they're pulled out. So that's why we're missing a lot of bushes this year. But anyway, um, I'm Home Inspector Dan. If you have any questions, send me a message. I'd be glad to help you out. I live in Arrow Point here. I'm a community member just like you guys. I just want this place to look good. And if there's anything I can do as a board member to help you guys out or help this community be a better place, please let me know.